You'll have seen the announcements recently of improvements to the iPhone for iOS 6, plus improvements to Google's Android with Jelly Bean, i Android 4.1. Apple seemed to have me on a blacklist and, as usual, refused to cooperate in terms of compatible loan hardware, so I'll leave further mention of iOS 6 for the autumn and the iPhone 5. Jelly Bean's a different matter, but it's due out for my Galaxy Nexus in a week or so, so rather than simply report on Google I.O.'s announcements, watch out for my hands-on video review of Android 4.1 very soon in the phone show. Highlights will include the faster Android graphics, Google Now, and far more flexible notifications. Motorola has officially introduced the first in the ruggedized Defy family to come with a QWERTY keyboard. Called, unsurprisingly, the Motorola Defy Pro, the handset is waterproof, dustproof and running Android 2.3. Ah, mind you, it's the classic 2.7-inch screened Nokia E61 BlackBerry Bold 9900 form factor and Android and indestructible, so I'm prepared to keep an open mind. Also from Motorola is the Atrix HD, effectively an oversized razor, sadly without the Max bit. The back's all Kevlar again, but now we have a 4.5-inch 720p LCD screen on the front, a 1.5GHz dual-core processor, 1GB of RAM, 8GB of internal memory, plus microSD and a 1780mAh battery. Hmm, I wonder if we'll get an Atrix HD Max with the monster battery. At least Motorola have started this on Android 4 from the beginning, and there are on-screen controls just like on the Galaxy Nexus. New from Samsung and reminiscent of the old Motorola Pro and the Defy Pro just mentioned is the Galaxy Chat, a QWERTY candy bar running Android 4 out of the box too, but with TouchWiz on top. The touchscreen is 3 inches big and has... Gah! I don't believe it! Quarter VGA resolution in 2012! Showstopper. This must be aimed at the super low end, sadly. I'd have been interested if the screen had been better. Hot off the press is the Motorola Moto Smart, a first smartphone for people, but with a high quality brand and build. 3.5 inch half VGA touchscreen, 3 megapixel camera, 1400 milliampere battery, and Android 2.3. Ah, well, there's always something. Still at the usual £100 Peugeot budget price point. I think I shocked a few people when I admitted the HTC One S and One X from my recent top five. Although terrific phones, I saw them both as ultimately crippled because of their sealed batteries and unexpandable memory. Imagine the scene, it's Christmas 2012, you've had either device for about eight months of hard use and the battery life isn't what it used to be. No way to stick in a fresh shell, it's off to the service centre with you. You've also filled up the internal flash disk, not much more than 12 gigabyte in the One S's case, and there's no micro SD support, so you're battling every week to delete content and apps so that you've got room for more. Okay, I'm perhaps exaggerating a little, and both of these caveats also apply to the Apple iPhone 4S and Motorola Razer Max, for example, but you get the idea. Add in a horribly exposed to dust and grease cameras on each device, and in my eyes, I just couldn't recommend the One S and One X in the top five. But what's this? <laughs> the HTC One V, the little sister of the range, which manages to fix two of these three nickels while coming in at half the price. The 1500 milliampere battery is still sealed, but there is a micro SD slot here under the end cap, plus the camera is recessed behind the main body of the phone, so it's quite protected. I've been generally unexcited by the prospect of reviewing the One V. After all, it's unashamedly mid-range, but once I got started, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> this is perhaps the pick of the modern Android budget pack. I even found the infamous chin growing on me. It's a great way to grip the phone without activating a button you didn't want to. That's here. That and the overall size and the way my fingers curled around the bottom meant that the One V is very secure in the hand. Of course, a 3.7 inch WVGA display seems a bit small these days, but Many people are now revolting against the largest 4.8 inch displays. I've been talking to some norm mobs, and I still maintain that for a phone, the 3.7 to 4 inch screen form factor is about perfect. Let's look at the specs though, away from the geek cutting edge. A one gigahertz single core processor is worryingly restrictive. A 512 megabyte of RAM is a bit stingy for an Android 4 phone with only 110 megabytes of free RAM after booting. Wow. But for basic Android apps and activities, it'll do, I think. Just go easy on browsing large websites and forget about the most ambitious games. Although HTC has put on Sense 4.0, its Android skin, it's dialed back a bit from what's on the One S and the One X. So no helicopter view, no live wallpaper, no eye candy, 3D stack of running apps. Everything's kept that bit simpler in an effort to lower the RAM requirements, 
which in turn brings the billet materials down and the battery life up. In short, there are compromises right, left and centre for the 1V. Most target market users are unlikely to notice them though. The usual HDC customization options are here. Most of the widgets seem to be too, and the full set of bundled applications are present, from the usual Google Android staples like Gmail, Google Maps, and YouTube, to the official Twitter and Facebook clients, from the editing version of Polaris Office to pre-installed versions of TuneIn Radio and Dropbox, the latter complete with the usual 25 gigabytes free for two years. Add in the HTC suite of flashlight, locations, weather, tasks, and so on, and you've got a very healthy starting point for a new 1V owner all of which will run fairly well given the limited horsepower. I was impressed by the haptic feedback here, possibly the nicest I've ever experienced on an Android phone. I was impressed by the terrifically fast camera that produced some decent results in here, even snapping shots in the middle of 720p video capture as on the One S and the One X. Test video here on the HTC One V. Do you know what? It's not bad for a budget to mid-range phone. Audio is not bad either. This is uh, continuous autofocus, maxes out at 720p, but this is good for the price. Multimedia generally is good with excellent video codecs, all my test videos played. And a speaker that's, well, better than HTC Fair from two years ago, but still not exactly stunningly loud or high quality. <laughs> There's a Beats logo here on the back, but only cheap HTC outer earbuds provided in the box, reducing Beats to being just another rock EQ setting to my ears at least. I mentioned expandability earlier. Absolutely essential on the 1V as the internal disk is just one gigabyte, plus rather confusingly, 100 megabytes of phone storage. I do wish manufacturers would make things clearer for users. Maybe Apple and Microsoft are right after all with their single contiguous memory bucket approach. Uh, apps here get, do get installed to the one gigabyte area uh, with the 100 megabyte presumably for Android OS to use as needed for temporary files. As with the One S and One X, the HTC One V is a high quality piece of kit in terms of hardware and software. And crucially, it's slightly more flexible and vastly cheaper. <laughs> of course, it's nowhere near as powerful a piece of pocket computing either, but then you takes your money and it makes your choice. <laughs> There's more here to like about the One V than I'd expected. I don't expect many phone show viewers to go rushing out to buy it, except perhaps for another family member with slightly lower smartphone ambitions. But if that is the case, do you know, I think they'd be very happy with this. I've got very annoyed with people saying that Nokia Bell here on the A28 PureView is uh, completely unusable. That's a gross exaggeration. I've been using it now for the last two weeks, day in, day out, and it's certainly very, very usable. Here's my, my emails. Um, next, a calendar appointment, number of megabytes left in my monthly tariff toggles, for in this case, my FM transmitter. Um, shortcuts to my family, NFC on and off, cap, clock, uh, the last few photos I took, weather forecast, shortcuts to all my main applications. Going into my application list, any one time I've got around about 20 programs actually running at the same time in the background, full full tilt, all waiting for input. Here's my gallery, for example. Um, music players in there was playing music, emails, checking for email, my podcatchers, of course, grabbing podcasts, videos. I've got a whole range of uh, Dozens of hours as a video are queued up for odd moments. Uh, the Nokia store, of course, is in the background. Oh, I've got four updates waiting. This is all happening in real time in the background. Um, let's go back to the main application list now. Uh, right at the bottom, just a few notes. I've got um, WhatsApp, a very popular uh, cross-platform instant messenger, uh, running all the time. YouTube, excellent YouTube client. Skype, of course, um, Notekeeper, that's the Evernote client for Symbian. Gravity, of course, the very well-known um, Twitter, Facebook, and other social network and Google Reader client, really, really powerful as well. Um, let's go into back to there. I've also got games, um, my favorite games, Microcool is my favorite, also Various Angry Birds, Real Golf, GT Racing, Backgammon, and a few others I'm trying out for review. Um, I ignore so Nokia, Nokia social networking, so I also ignore the built-in <laughs> Twitter and Facebook icons there. I use my own clients, thank you very much. Over the air, updating, of course, no need to go in via a plug-in and via a desktop. Uh, Nokia Internet Radio, Going back to the main home screen, my most used four shortcuts. Micropool, of course, great, uh, great, great pool game here. Uh, Podcatcher, grabbing podcasts in the background, around the clock at any one time. 
just type, tap on uh, what's new and there are new shows ready for me to listen to instantly um handy safe pro really really useful for all my confidential information website passwords and so forth and that's cross-platform with windows phone android and other platforms and of course gravity which you saw earlier for tweets facebook google reader and more so don't let anyone tell you that bell feature pack one on the 808 pure isn't usable it certainly is very usable and i'm living proof <laughs> see you next time